so I've got the latest version of Docker installed. Let's um, clear this out and check the branches that we have. I'm going to cut a new branch and call it Docker Containerize My .NET App. And that's the purpose of the video. We're going to containerize this uh, web app that I've created in ASP.NET Core. Um, I'm going to show you the app quickly in Visual Studio Code. It's just got the skeleton template. It's got a unit test project. Um, and you could see the video link showing up on the top right where I show you how to create this all from command line using the .NET CLI. Now, there are two extensions I'm going to install in Visual Studio Code. The first one's Docker. It helps you create, manage, and debug container applications. Uh, a very, very useful extension. I totally recommend you download it. Um, you can see it, it makes all these power commands available to you right from within Visual Studio Code. And the second one is the Docker Explorer. It gives you explore capabilities right within Visual Studio Code. We're going to go deeper into these as we progress further into the video. OK, so with that, let's clear the console. And I'm going to simply build my application and just show you the application running. So that's building, that's build. Just need to um, specify the project name as well. And with that, we're running the application. So let's just take that address into a browser. And there you go. That's the vanilla .NET app. Now next up, we're going to look at how we're going to containerize this app. So we'll start off by creating a Docker file and go through the process of doing that. Docker can build images automatically by reading the instructions from a Docker file. So let's start off by creating a Docker file. The Docker file is essentially a text document that contains all the commands and instructions necessary to create an image. Docker file must begin with the from keyword. And in this case, what we're using is a parent image that is the ASP.NET 3.1 runtime. So the from instruction specifies the parent image from which you are building to so, sort of have a foundation uh, to build off your uh, Docker image. Now, rather than me writing all the code, uh, what I'm going to do is write up some pseudo code and explain the steps, and then we'll progress um, and translate that into some real code. So the first thing we need to do is we need to copy the .NET core uh, binaries that we're compiling into this container. We need to configure a working directory so we pin where, where the .NET uh, runtime picks up the execution DLLs from. And essentially, we specify the DLLs that is the entry point into the container. So you remember I did a .NET uh, core build command before. Now, if I show you the tree view, you can see that in bin debug, I have the publish folder. And within the publish folder, I have the two DLLs that I need in order to execute my .NET core command. And similarly, in, under the release folder, I have the same uh, DLLs available. So as indicated in the pseudo code, I essentially just need to specify the path to the DLL folder um, and, and the relative path from here on um, and copy that into an app folder. An app is what I'm calling the target folder and I'm setting that up as my working directory within the container. And at that point, the container has uh, the working directory, which comprises of the DLLs that are needed to run my application. And I'm telling the container that the entry point is .NET, and I want it to load my web.dll. So remember, because we're using the ASP.NET Runtime 3.1, 3.1 because our project's based in 3.1, we have everything that is needed to run ASP.NET um, uh, 3.1 essentially into the base image already and app to app, start of .NET, and then specify the my web DLL. So hopefully you, you get a gist of what I've written in this Docker file. This isn't the final Docker file I'm creating, so hold on and, and bear with me. So let's just quickly do a .NET clean um, so that we get rid of any historic DLLs in there. And if I do a tree view now, you see I don't have a published folder anymore. That's because I've nuked it by running the .NET clear command. I'm running .NET publish in configuration type release 
to generate the necessary DLLs that we need to copy into our Docker container. Let's clear that out and now run the Docker build command with a minus T switch to tag the target image. Let's just tag it as my web colon debug, specify the file path to our Docker file and set the context as the current directory. Now when I run this, it's just simply going through the instructions in the Docker file. As you can see, it's downloading the Docker 3.1 sp.net 3.1 runtime. Uh, and that download uh, can take a little bit of time. It completes, it's gonna pull down the images and then it's gonna simply copy the DLLs into the container, set the working directory as app and specify the entry point into the container. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the Docker images command to show you the image that has been generated from the build. As you can see, we can see the reference to the ASP.NET uh, 3.1 runtime, as well as the MyWeb debug image, which has now been created for us. So that all looks great. Um, quickly flip over to the Docker Explorer, uh, show you the same within Visual Studio Code, and this is why this extension is amazing, because it brings all of that uh, right into the context of Visual Studio Code. All right, going back, into the command line. I'm now going to run up this image that we've created. I'm going to use the docker run publish um, command and here I'm publishing the command and mapping port 80 from the container into port 8080 of my local machine. I'm going to run the container in detached mode. More on that later. Give it a name my web and then specify the tag of the image that I want to run. Now at this point the container is running. Um, and it's not evident to you right away and you're like, but where is it running? Let's flip over into a browser and navigate into localhost at the port 8080. And you remember port 8080 is what we mapped into the container image port 80. I'm gonna run the docker logs command and show you the logs from my web container. And you can see, we can see right away that uh, it's running the ASP.NET application. So let's terminate this. And here's where I will explain you why the detach keyword was important. Now, if I go back into the browser and I refresh it, hey, this container is still working, but I terminated it on the command line. And so just to prove that, if I run docker ps minus a, and ps here stands for process status. So any running containers, it will list out here. You can see that the docker container is still reporting as available. And if I run the stats, I can see the percentage CPU and process it's consuming. And you see it's, it's updating in real time here. So I have to physically stop the container and I can do that by running the docker stop command. Now if I show you the stats, you see this, that, that the stats are zero. And if I go back to the browser, the process is killed, therefore I don't get to see my web page. And in the ps command, it's showing me as well that the container has been shut down and ex exited. Great. So just to just to make this more real, um, I would like to see the logs updated in real time. So I'm going to update the logger here and add a log information command. For every time we click on the home page, I want a log entry to be created in the logs saying you've just hit the home page. Um, and, and that way, when we run this in the container in a detached mode, um, and we go and hit the home page, I want the logs to update to show that output. Okay, so hello from home controller. Let's save that. Let's also remove the container image. We're gonna use the Docker extension that we installed, the Docker Explorer to remove the image and the container that we built previously and click OK. Switch back into the terminal. I'm going to run the .NET publish command again so that the code changes I've made are consumed in the new DLLs that are generated. Um, next up, I'm going to build the container again, tag it as my web debug, point to the Docker file and you can see that because it's already downloaded the ASP.NET runtime, the next time I run the, the Docker build, it's far more quicker. Okay, we're gonna run the same run command, map out process 80 in the container with 8080 locally, and then let's just run the Docker PS minus So you can see that the container is now up uh, and reporting is available. So 
let's look at the logs for the running container and you can see it's it's there. Now if I hit the home page a few times you can see that the logs are updating in real time. Again you can see it's just saying hello from home controller. Cool so I'm gonna stop the container docker stop my web and you can see that that's what's reported in the ps a status as well that the container has been exited. So let's clear that out. So so far we've just created a very basic container that depends on us locally running uh, .NET release, but that's not uh, that's not where we're going to stop. We're going to make this really sophisticated. So join me in the next video where we're going to refactor this Docker file and make it fully independent by changing into multi-stage container Docker file, where we don't need to run the release .NET release command locally. All of that would be run from within the container. All right, let's get started. Let's comment out what we've created so far. Okay, let's write some pseudo code so we know what we're doing. Um, well, essentially what we have to do is we have to create uh, a base image. And in this case, we can still use the SPNet runtime base image. But what we need is another image which has all the .NET related SDKs in it so that we could use that as the foundation to build our .NET project. Okay, so in this build phase, we're essentially going to copy the .NET uh, project CS files and restore any NuGet package dependencies we have, again, all within that container. And then once we've done that, we'll build the container um, by running .NET build, and then we're going to run .NET publish right within the container. And once we've done that, from within the container, we can copy the binaries that we've published into the final base image that we're referring to right at the top and then make that as the entry point uh, for our base image. So let's make this real. I'm still going to use the SPNet uh, runtime 3.1 because I don't want the fluff of the SDK within the final image and, and that's why it's safe to use the runtime because it doesn't have those additional packages in it. Okay, SPNet colon 3.1 and we're going to refer to this as the base and that's a keyword we can we can call which just precludes that that's the base image okay so make that as the work directory uh, and expose port 80 and expose port 443 out of the base uh, image container now in the build phase we're going to use a different base image and in this case we're going to use the uh, Microsoft uh, .NET Core uh, 3.1 SDK and the SDK image has all the necessary SDK packages pre-baked in it, so we don't have to do, do the hard work of setting the packages up before we can actually compile the code. Um, let's refer to that as the build phase um, and type as build. Cool. So you can see that the only difference between the two is one's the runtime and one's the SDK. So I'm going to set the work directory as source Uh, now, at, at this point, if I run uh, an ls, I wouldn't see anything in the source folder because we haven't essentially copied anything there. So I'm going to run the copy command to copy the myweb.csproj from the source, which is, you know, the root, into the destination, which is within the src folder. Okay. Now if I run .NET restore, um, what would happen is it's going to look at uh, the csproj properties uh, of my .NET project, work out all the NuGet package dependencies I have, and resolve them. Now I'm simply saying once you've done that, copy everything in the current directory at source into the current directory at target, and I will set uh, source forward slash myweb as my current working directory so that uh, if I run .NET build now, everything within that uh, MyWeb folder gets built. Uh, and in this case, the only thing that we have there is the MyWeb.cs project. So we're going to run that in the release configuration and output it into a forward slash app, forward slash build folder. So with that done, um, we're going to run... Now this is the beauty of the multi-stage containers. 
because in this case I'm able to refer to the container that I've created in the previous step and the container that I've created in the previous step I refer to that as build so in this next step I'm just saying take that very container and run the dotnet publish command in there and see the benefit of doing that is I don't need to copy the csproj file and restore it I've independently just done that in the previous step and in this step I'm able to extend it by simply referring to it okay so we've run the dotnet publish command now and we're tagging this phase as the publish phase so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say from base which is the very first step in the container file uh, tag that as um, as final uh, set the working directory as app and now copy from the publish stage um, you know this folder which is called forward slash app forward slash publish um, into the final container and with this you know the final container is very undiluted all it has is the dotnet runtime and these additional binaries which with the interim steps we have uh, compiled um, and, and remember because we've done it in the interim steps we don't have any SDKs or any additional packages that have now needed to be carried forward because everything that we need is just in the runtime so overall the image size of the container that gets built isn't bloated now because it has all these additional SDK files and also you know sometimes if in your build process you need to use things like secrets and all then those secrets don't get carried forward into your final image okay so let's just run the dotnet build command now as you can see uh, we already have the ASP.NET runtime available uh, but we're using the SDK so it's just going through and downloading the SDK uh, and it will take a bit of time because the SDK uh, image is slightly lar larger than the runtime image once it's completed the download it's going to pull down the image locally and then proceed to the next set of steps in our docker file okay so the next step is it's simply copying the my web CS proj restoring all the packages building it and then publishing it and then taking the final DLLs and adding them into the base and then setting up the entry point okay if I run the docker images you see now I have more than one image there the SDK the runtime and the final tagged image this is also showing you the interim steps and you can see that the interim step where the SDK is used to do the build is over 700 MB but now the final container that we have which has the runtime and the only two DLLs we need is only 200 MB alright let's run this container up now so I'm simply going to use the docker run command map the process of port 8080 locally to port 80 on the container give it a name let's call it my web and map it to my web dot debug um, container tag okay you can see that the logs show up right now let's flip across to the web page and hit the home page a few times if we come back happy days right it's um, we can see that the logs are updating and we can see the home page so same output as the previous phase but the multi steps allow us to have an all-inclusive docker file that's independent and self-contained alright so next up we're gonna move into the final stage of this demo where we're gonna look at how we can build and publish container images into docker hub using Azure DevOps so I'm gonna show you a git status you can see that the changes I've made to my branch are uncommitted so I'm gonna stage the changes by running git add dots commit the changes let's just give it a commit comment of docker initialize as we have dockerized our file now it's all containerized let's push the changes up to the server and let's clear the terminal if we go back into Azure DevOps um, and if I take you directly into the Azure pipelines page let's select um, the pipeline that we pipeline file that we have already the YAML file um, and nuke that away we're gonna start fresh um, and in this case we're only gonna include the branch which we have created which is the docker forward slash containerized my dotnet app branch Ex exclude the master branch for CI triggers and we will batch all the changes again you know I cover all of these concepts in the previous video so uh, feel free to uh, um, check out the other videos on the channel so I'm gonna use the uh, Ubuntu pool um, and I'm gonna just use the build configuration variable in mode release 
Uh, now the out-of-box library in Azure DevOps has tasks for Docker and that's exactly what we're going to use. So just to quickly show you that the Docker task has all these steps um, out of the box available. Um, so we also have the option of securely setting up a connection to our Docker registry. Now in this case we're simply going to use the open source Docker Hub registry. If I show you in the connection string, that's the page. So let's just quickly create the Docker Hub um, reg registry. Um, so I've just created the registry. I'm going to create a new repository in there. I'm going to call it my web. I'm just going to leave it as a public uh, repository for now. So come back into the connection page and we can search for Docker registry. Um, and let's just set up the credentials needed to authenticate against the registry. And these are encrypted and secured um, within Azure DevOps. Uh, the beauty is they integrate right away within Azure YAML pipeline, so you don't need to manage that encryption and that integration uh, using uh, some bespoke code. Okay, so with that done, I'm going to come back um, and just quickly refresh this so it picks up the connection details. So go back into the Docker task. Now you see if I can see the container registry and the connection string there. I'm going to just specify the name. I'm simply going to use the build switch for now and leave all the defaults in there. And the defaults are simply pointing to the Docker file location and the rest of the logic is essentially within the Docker file location so we, we needn't specify anything more here. Um, we could have just used the build and publish command but instead I'm showing you two steps separately uh, just to show you the use of variables as well. So this step, let's just use push, leave rest of the defaults in there. Now you see, we've hard-coded the registry name and the repository name. I don't like that, right? Instead, I'm going to use the variable section for this. So let's just create a variable called container underscore registry underscore string. And then let's create another variable called container underscore repository underscore string. And the repository that we've created is called iWalkman. And the name of the service endpoint is called mywebdockerheb. Okay, well we can now take these variables and substitute them for these hard-coded values. So I'm just gonna do that across the two tasks. Using variables is always a better option, right? Because it's, it's, you're not gonna make the typos that you would make if you constantly type the hard-coded values across the, the board. Okay, let's save this uh, pipeline. Let's call it Initialize Docker Azure Pipeline. So that's saved. I'm simply going to rename that as Docker Day 1 and keep coming back because I'm running this challenge for seven, seven days, right? So there's going to be seven days of uh, Docker videos for you to, to look at. Okay, let's run this pipeline and we can see that the Azure pipeline's triggered. It's initialized the job. Now it's running the Docker step. So it's taking our Docker file and simply working through it um, and downloading the SDK and then doing our multi-stage container build um, like we saw in the previous step it's copying um, the compiled DLLs uh, from the published folder across into the final folder and making that as the final image and with that our image should almost be ready yes it's ready now it's working through the publish process so it's it's going to use the service connection endpoint here to securely publish the image up to docker hub and in this case the image is tagged uh, as well so we've got a two-way relationship we can see where it came from and come back to the pipeline and work that out so you can see uh, docker hub now has our image in the registry and we've got the sha if i come back into the step i can show you that's the unique sha that got generated when we build the image so fantastic, right? Um, that's that's all for, for from me in this video. We've covered uh, the basic concepts of Docker. We've seen how to create a basic Docker file locally. We've seen how to write a multi-stage container and now how to use Azure pipelines to securely publish, build and publish container images to Docker Hub. And that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and comment. See you in the next video.